Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. The Outdoor Adventure Series celebrates individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration, stewardship, conservation, access, and enjoyment of the great outdoors. In this episode, we continue our celebration of NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries 50th year of ocean conservation and stewardship. Our guest today on the Outdoor Adventure Series is Matt McIntosh. Matt is a visual information specialist at the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries via the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. He provides graphic design, illustration, photography, video, and motion graphics expertise. Matt, it is a pleasure to have you on the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Welcome. Thank you, Howard. It's exciting to be here. Fantastic. And I, I think you are episode number six that I have recorded, and you are now continuing the streak of envy. I envy <laughs> you guys because you all have the coolest jobs. Let me tell you that. Oh, well, thank you. Thank then, you. I think so, too. Yep. Well, that's good. So listen, uh, for the next 30, 45 minutes, and if we go a little longer, I hope you're okay with that. I would just love to learn more about you and the work that you're doing for the National Marine Sanctuaries. And, and, and also because of your connection through the foundation, tell us, we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about the foundation as well. But right now, share a little bit about your background and 30,000 foot view. How'd you get, uh, what was that path to get to this space where you are today? Well, I mean, I've always been kind of interested in art and maybe that's because I didn't do so well in school and other subjects. I did find out that I had dyslexia, so that kind of held me back a little bit. So I ended up just doing things I really liked as a, as a younger kid. So I kind of excelled a little bit in that. But yeah, then I went to college and I concentrated on um, applied media arts with a concentration in graphic design and photography. That led me to my first professional job, which was at a medical magazine, basically just putting text and pictures on a page for many different magazines in the medical field. And then a couple more jobs. I ended up at NOAA, um, not with sanctuaries. I, I was actually with marine protected areas and the National Estuarine Research Reserves, did a little work for fisheries, and then a position opened up in sanctuaries and I, I, I went for it. Fantastic. And a couple questions just to kind of circle back and unpack what you just shared with us. First, where did you go to, where did you grow up? Let's share that first. I grew up in Maryland, a town called Crofton, Maryland. It's kind of like right in the middle. If you were to draw a triangle between Washington, Baltimore, and Annapolis, it's pretty much right in the center. Okay. I grew up there and then I went to school um, in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, which is right about 20 minutes south of Lake Erie. Okay. I went there to wrestle and also for art. We okay. had a really good wrestling team there. Wrestling and art, those are like... Very, very different. Very I know. different. I, I can see that one, one or the other is going to kind of cause you some problems in a bar. Well, I think it, it definitely messed me up with my identity. I mean, I'm sitting there doing art classes with some very artistic, creative people, and then I end up practice with some very intense sports fanatics. So it's very, it's very different. It's kind of, it was interesting. It's funny. I uh, did a podcast earlier today out here in Las Vegas, where I live, first choice a tree service. And the general manager went to UNLV as a former wrestler, football player, alignment, big guy, lots of uh, artwork on his, his arms. Nice. And nicest guy in the world. He loves climbing trees and just kind of work in the world of being a, an arborist and running the tree service for the company. And, you know, we go to school, we have these interests in variety, which is great because you've got the artistic side, you've got the physical fitness side, and that's pretty cool. As you landed in the world of NOAA, even before the sanctuaries, had you had an affinity for the outdoor space, for the water activities on the water? I, I, yeah, definitely. I was an outdoor kid. I mean, 
any and all free time I had was always spent outdoors. Vacations were always at the beach or a lake in Wisconsin where I had family. Mm -hmm. So we were doing all sorts of water sports, fishing. I really took to the outdoors later in life because my family wasn't big into backpacking or anything like that. Right. But I, I took a huge interest in that after college, after actually, yeah, after college, way after college. <clears throat> so I do that now with my brother and some other family members. So we like to visit national parks. I mean, yeah, I still, I, I just love being outside. I, I, I totally get it. I grew up in the Midwest and the Detroit suburbs and spent a lot of time on Lake Michigan and Chicago. And just getting out and about is just wonderful. And I, I totally get that. And it's great that you get to do it with family, like your brother and your family. And as you started to kind of gravitate to Noah and eventually to the sanctuaries, what was it about Noah and then about the sanctuaries that really appealed to you? Well, Noah... I, I applied for a position that I saw in the Washington Post, actually. It was in the newspaper back in the day. We, I mean, that's how we found our jobs. Yeah, back in the day. Um, actually, that one might have been online. But the, the first few jobs I got were definitely in the paper. I was just looking for something different, I think. Something more challenging. Mm -hmm. Something to change up what I was doing. I think I was doing a lot of web work. I was working mm -hmm. with webmasters. But I was providing design. Um it was nice, but I was ready to reach out and, or branch out and do something different. So I applied for no, for a NOAA position where I split my time between marine protected areas and national estuarine research reserves. Mm -hmm. I think I worked there for about two years when the position opened up with sanctuaries. And the reason I, and the reason to be honest, I really didn't know a ton about sanctuaries at that time. But as a visual guy and someone doing, putting pictures with text and rearranging everything, sanctuaries had the best photo library. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I was always grabbing photos from their library for the work I was doing for, for marine protected areas. And then I got to know the graphic designer. There was one graphic designer there and I got to know her a little bit, found out what she did, saw all of her work. And then a little bit later, I found out when she was leaving. Um, the position went open and I talked to a few people, got an interview and ended up getting a job. Fantastic. So my next question then is as you began to work more with the, inside the sanctuaries, and, and I have to agree when I go out to your website and I look at what's produced, I, and, and this is where a little bit of my envy comes in. It's like, wow, I'm a former wedding photographer. I mean. You you guys get to, I mean, I suppose that's nice. You got to, people have to make a living doing that. But the, the the artwork, the graphics that are produced in support of the the sanctuaries, and now especially because of the 50th anniversary celebration, are just phenomenal. As you began to acclimate into the National Marine Sanctuaries, what have been some of the the I don't know, let's call them highlight projects that you've worked on. Oh man, there's been quite a few highlight projects. I would say for me, probably some of the illustrations and the infographics I've worked on recently. We have a, a yearly publication called Earth is Blue, mm -hmm. and we like to put a center like fold out kind of infographic in the middle. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do is, is kind of emulate a little bit of sort of that National Geographic artwork, look and feel. And I actually have studied and looked at some of the artists at National Geographic, some of their work. I've just spent hours studying what they do. Mm -hmm. And one of them, I, I do know a little bit just through the internet. I reached out to him and I've been talking to him since his name's Fernando Baptista. Mm -hmm. And he is by far the hands down the best infographic um, producer I've ever seen. So I think for me, I've been doing infographics for a while, but not since my last two do I feel like I've actually reached the pinnacle of what I can accomplish. And I think I'm kind of at the, almost at the level, and I wouldn't say the level of Fernando Batu, he's just a master, but I think I'm at that level that, yeah, I mean, it could, some of my stuff could be probably featured in a National Geographic magazine. So I, I think I'm the biggest critic 
And so I would re I would really strive to get to that point. And it took several, several different infographics before I finally got to that point. When I say infographics, I'm talking about like this very heavily illustrated, uh, scientific kind of like infographics that give you a really good sense and feel of, of what's going on. I did a couple that I really enjoyed. One was a whale fall, which is when a, a whale dies of natural causes and falls to the bottom of the ocean. And it basically creates its own ecosystem, sort of you would think of a desert where there's nothing. And then all of a sudden, all these nutrients fall in one place. So it attracts all these millions of creatures. So that, that infographic, even though it's a little dark in terms of it being a, a whale death, it, it really pushed me to my limits in terms of creating and illustrating, cause I was doing so many different creatures, highlighting the different creatures, telling them, you know, kind of listing what, what they do, you know, it would be an illustration of a, a creature kind of blow it up. And then you would kind of give it its stats, sort of like a baseball card, you know? So that was a fun, yeah.